Greetings, sim captains, and welcome aboard the Kalimata Concorde. We just downloaded this this morning, as it was uh, just released, I believe. It's basically in beta. It's still in development. They make no bones about it, and uh, I love it already, but there's already a few things that are super irritating. You'll notice we're sitting out here at the ramp. I tried to push back from the gate, and I'll include some hilarious footage. Better push back uh, connected and spun me in donuts for about five minutes. Wouldn't disconnect until I got irritated, throttled up, and uh, basically crashed it. But let's jump inside. Cockpit is beautiful. Set up some viewpoints here. So here's the pilots. I usually move way back. We're actually behind the seat because the the fixed perspective they give. Uh, you can't see any instrumentation. And in real life, you could, you know, glance with your eyeballs down. But uh, unless you're using the VR, that's obnoxious. So I tend to fly from back here. There's a hidden Garmin 1000, and we have a video on how to use this if you don't already know. Click up here on the bezel, it's going to disappear. You've also got the INS, there's uh, three here. And you can download the uh, Siva INS. Uh, it's, I believe, partially integrated at this point from what they said. Let's keep looking around here. Here's our overhead. Farther overhead. Let's go back down. Look at our throttle quadrant and our pedestal. And because this is a three man three pilot, three crew flight deck. We have our flight engineer station. Now everything is here and movable. It's all ready to go. Let's find something to click on. Switches are going to move. But uh, just because they're there and move doesn't mean they do anything yet. So, got a nice clicking sound. You notice all of these dials are blacked out. We'll come back to that in a second. I think I saw the door it was already open here. We do have a door. Oh, can I close it? There we go. So you can walk back to the cabin. You can open the door. We got a neat little graphic here of that happening. There's also a control panel here. The graphical user interface is going to let you deal with the doors. Let's go to uh, aircraft and doors and ground. Now here's a weird thing. Look at that. I didn't tell that door to close, but when we open this menu, it's closing itself. So we can click here on that door and it's going to open up. You notice we have an extensive amount of equipment available. So let's uh, Let's finish touring the cabin and we'll jump back outside and see that. Um, quite a few things to see here. The carpet, pretty basic. The seats are decent. I'm noticing some cabin sounds. Someone's left their iPad. Oh, that's a nice little tribute. Very nice. Very nice touch. I didn't see that until right now. You've uh, discovered it with me. In the center cabin, we have a lavatory. Ooh, opening and closing lavatory door. That's nice. It does help to distract me from this rather awful carpeting. Don't take my criticisms too seriously. I'm already in love with this aircraft. It is, uh, been a long time coming here to have a functional Concord. You might notice our outer textures are basic. Um, doesn't look like we can see in the windows, but we can see out them from the inside. So let's go check that out. Oh man. Now they are going to be publishing updates, they've mentioned. 
So some of these things might come along with time. There are cabin ambiences back. Let's go check out one of those windows. It's the little tiny Concord windows because we're so far out of the atmosphere that uh, can't have much larger. And we'll see if uh, if we can get this thing airborne if these displays actually operate. All right. Well, let's go back up front for a moment. Uh, actually, no. Let's go outside. Let's play with play with those ground menus. All right. So we click the graphical interface, aircraft, doors, and ground. Let's just do them one at a time. Let's get. Uh, Let's get the catering. The menu. Here we go. Concord cuisine. Beautiful. Well, that's interesting. All right. Um, let's do our service van. There it is. Let's just go to town and open all these doors. There we go. I can see the doors opening. Again, the textures may not be amazing, but everything works. And, uh, there was a older Concorde that was free. Uh, I'll be honest, I've only barely flown it around, mostly to make some cool video graphics, because it just wasn't accurately rendered enough to make it really enjoyable to fly. And uh, I don't think that's going to be the case here. All right, let's get some other things. Air conditioning, conveyors, fuel truck, GPU. And I'll just dump the menu all together. There's your GPU, more catering in the rear. Conveyor shop, there we go, there's a conveyor. There's a conveyor. I don't believe I opened all those doors, so let's go back to that. Ground doors. Ah, cargo doors. Click, 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 click. And we'll do the engine doors in a moment. So there we go. Did we get our cargo doors? Unlock the camera so we can get up there a little better. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. Cargo door. Nice. Very nice. Okay, now we're going to stay down here for this one because we can open the engines. Isn't that cool? Let's watch that. Oh, nice. That is a thing of beauty. Wonderful. Alright, uh, and another neat little feature. There's a Placement engine, you can click that, and here it is. So awaiting a swap. Uh, I saw I, and I, one of these actual engines, Rolls Royce Olympus, was on sale on the internet. Perhaps it was a Jalopnik article for, <laughs> for display only, but you could buy an actual engine for Concorde. I've got some other things. There we go. I believe we have opened everything we can possibly open now. Let's get the menu out of the way. This is a lot of ground handling equipment. So again, if you can forgive the carpet and the fact that you're not going to zoom in and see rivets, uh, you've got some amazing things here. Look at these beautiful stairs. Sorry, sorry. Pardon my awful camera work here. You can go. Uh, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't move the camera well enough to simulate walking up here. Um, but hey, you can do this for real in uh, Seattle, the Museum of Flight. Actually, been on board their Concorde at a, about this uh, position here. Quite an experience. Quite an experience. Wish I could have flown on it when it was flying. All right, so let's see how we turn this thing on. Your electrics are over here on the flight engineers, but uh, you can click 
click it, but it's not going to really do anything to my understanding. And I believe we have a little bit of see some electrical in the overhead. Not much. Not much. Yeah, three-man crew, you're going to get all of your electrics back here. That's flight engineers territory. So click your graphical user interface. Go to flight engineer and you're going to click systems startup. And it's going for startup. While it's doing it, check this out. This is kind of neat. See how everything does a test almost like when you uh, start a car and all of your gauges run up and back. Look at this altimeter running up. Pretty neat. Now, when I tried this a moment ago, uh, it immediately went from this into an engine start. You notice back here the actual flight engineer station. Nothing's happening. Those dials are not turning on, so maybe that's something we can expect in a future update. Alright, now I'll leave these. Oh, here, here we go. Engine 3 is starting. Engine 2 is starting. Uh, those blue blinking lights are for the thrust reversers. Oh, sorry, I talked over that. They have built in some uh, first officer call-outs for you to help you out since this is not really wasn't intended to be a a one-person crew. Alright, so what was that? 3, 2, 1, and now 4. Interesting startup order. Uh, I don't know if this is real for the actual Concorde. Seems a little bizarre to me, but the reversers are engaged. Let's go outside. Oh my goodness. Let's get rid of all that ground equipment. Bye bye bye. There we go. Quite a few things to click on. Oh no, that's interesting. As the doors closed, you notice the uh, sound changed. Alright. Oh yeah, confirm that. The reversers are deployed. I'm going to use keyboard command. No, reversers are not. Alright. Well, uh, looking through the documentation, there was an essentials guide in a PDF format, and it didn't actually... <laughs> it refers a quick start guide and a full manual. Uh, I don't believe either of which they have released yet. So, you're going to experiment with me on our maiden voyage. Nav lights. There we go. We've got our position lights. Red, green. The top of the overhead right now. Lights, high and low. I don't even know what that does. Let's try it. Is that... Oh, that's entire that's beautiful. Those test lights, I like it. Uh, roof. Okay, that's a dome light. Light deck door at the moment is great. Everything seems to actually be rendered. Let's turn on this. Oh, there we go, good. We've got our bong. Anti-collision lights. Should have turned that on before the engine. Oh, interesting. I'm pretty sure when we got that the leading edge of our delta wing, we got basically position lights again. I guess I was expecting sort of a rotating beacon, but... Okay, well we've got a tail stroke. Maybe Concorde didn't have that. I'll have to go and check. Alright, let's stop fooling around and uh, see if we can't move her. Disengage the parking brakes with my. There we go. Parking brake is right here. I did not click on it, I just used the uh, 
foot pedals. And here's our visor. Let's go. There's a click zone. There we go. Very nice. There she comes. Let's go outside and see what that looks like. Okay, visor's down. Try out the nose. There we go. That's only the first droop level. Let's uh, take a quick look at this if you haven't seen it yet. That's in development. Settings. Got sound, user interface, resource saving. So it looks like you can save state. Flight preparation. Well, it's coming along, but they do have, uh, I guess we'd call this sort of an FMC. You're going to be able to put in here your legs to work with this navigation system. I'm not going to do that at the moment. The payload manager is beautiful. Look at that. Can we click on a specific seat? Plus 12 passengers, minus 12. Why we have to go in 12s, but all right, I'll take it. Uh, let's do a little less. Okay, fuel manager says in development. Uh, the main issue with this is going to be that we've got to handle uh, the balance of the fuel because it's used almost to trim the aircraft, if you will. And the flight plan, that's not there. All right. All right. Aircraft. Uh, you've already seen some of this status. Again, beautiful. We've got our... Uh, we're overweight for landing, so for go around, uh, uh, not a go around. Uh, if for some reason, after takeoff, we had to return to field for some issue, that would need to be dealt with. Fuel, beautiful diagram, changing in real time, love it. Engines, very nice. Center of gravity, also very nice. So not everything might be done here, but what is done looks perfect. It's, uh, I think it's what we've all been dreaming of, and you've already seen this, so let's get out there. Navigation, I think we will do that. Is that the same as the flight prep? Map. Oh, you can just hit M to get that. SIVA. Interesting, I'm not the person to tell you how to use a SIVA, I have not actually used one before and the waypoint list that's from your flight preparation okay flight engineer we already looked at this so uh, we did a system start we're not going to shut down the trim setting you're not going to adjust it yourself you're going to come here click it and your uh, automated flight engineer will handle that for you so I guess we're going to taxi out and then we'll click trim for takeoff custom content I don't have anything for there and oh checklist before taxi uh, do nothing well hey <laughs> I've done nothing I think we're gonna file this in the things to come category noise amendment I think they meant abatement all right whatever let's go for a ride uh, you know what I think they already turned the brakes off but we're not moving let's look at that brake Nope, here we go. All right. Throttle up a little. I'm going to apologize in advance for this having a very little uh, appropriateness to any real flight characteristic. I'm not pulling charts. I'm not checking weather. I'm actually noticing the... Uh, real traffic coming in so we'll just take off with the runway they're using all right it's about uh, quarter throttle there she's moving nicely I told you better pushback was an absolute disaster I might mess with that more later I believe the documentation mentioned they have some custom ground handling they have built into this, which is uh, 
Well, it's probably quite necessary. X-Plane has done some very screwy ground handling things with other aircraft and uh, the way that front gear is could be a little bit bizarre. Looks beautiful. Quick note on taxiing. If you take a look at where that front gear is relative to the cockpit, I think it's about 20 feet or so. So when we actually turn to line up, from our perspective, we should be past the line by about 20 feet before we're actually ready to initiate the turn. It's going to be a little awkward. Looks like we're in line behind a regional jet. It's so hard to break that habit. 737. All right. What did you say? Start turning now. Let's go look. Let's go look. Oh, pretty good. Pretty close. Maybe use a little toe break. toe break. Alright. Well, the ground handling's not bad. But the, you, know, you can see that wheel's hard over and we're just sort of sliding forwards on it. So I guess we're at 2-2 uh, two, two right. Uh, come on. Alright, let's uh, take a little peek for traffic here. Coming in. All right. So let's taxi out and line up for two two right. All right. We have no flaps on Concord, so we don't need to set flaps. There are no spoilers, so we don't need to check for spoilers. We do, however, absolutely need to get that fuel trim set for takeoff. I'm not entirely certain what that beeping is. Well, that may just be... There's our CG. Hmm. Well, we'll see. when I'm hitting the throttle that we're getting. On runway, at. two, two, right, flaps, <laughs> flaps. Oh, x -Roz. we don't have flaps. We're Concord. All right. Let's look up here. Uh, these look like landing lights. Extend, let's see, do the lights should pop out? Not exactly lined up, am I? And let's click on. Ooh, that's bright. Oh, there they are. They are extended. Wow, look at that light. That is a serious light. Whew. Okay. Uh, I need to pause and check our performance for a moment. Alright, before we go here, I'm just quickly checking some of the information on the reheat, which you might also call afterburn. We're going to be using the reheat until about 2,000 to 3,000 feet above ground level and 250 knots. Um, we can only use the reheat for about 15 minutes as we are flying. That's uh, apparently is about as much as it was allowed to use. It's going to have incredible fuel burn and they've added a reheat clock. The bottom of this chronometer should be timing the reheat uh, used. Also, if I'm reading their documentation correctly, we're going to use the reheat to uh, push it up into our super cruise range. So once we get past Mach 1.7, on We're runway going. two two right. On runway two two right. Thanks, X Ross. Two two right. Uh, so. Mach 1.7 plus, we're going to cut it out and let it super cruise on its own. We just want to be in the sort of 50, 
52 to 60,000 foot range here. There are 56 pages of documentation with this, even though it is not actually a full manual. It's kind of the uh, glance over. I quickly ran through all of that before we went. Oops, somebody just landed on me. JetBlue. JetBlue just landed on us. All right, well, let's let JetBlue clear the runway. And while he does that, let's go to our flight engineer tab. We're going to trim for takeoff. Oh, nice. There's a little call out. Did you catch that? I guess I can't click it again for you. We'll do it. Uh, while it's doing that, let's go to aircraft, center gravity. Okay, when it first clicked in, I think I saw this moving. And there we go. It says selected trim is at takeoff. All right, uh, we do have some functioning autopilot functions. We do have some navigation, either, oops, sorry, it's nauseating, through your inertial, which again, I don't know how to use. If you just click here above these instruments, you're gonna get your G1000. But uh, I'm not interested in actually doing a flight right now. I just wanna see how she does. You're with me for the maiden voyage. I have not attempted to take off yet. I should really check, but I'm under the impression takeoff is not done with the nose down. That's really just for approach. Oh, let's line up. Yuck. We are going to have the windscreen down for visibility, but not, not the nose. All right. Are we looking like we're at 2-2. Two, two. Alright, uh, when we get into reheat, we should get these yellow indicator lights here down on the exhaust gas temperature. So I have the uh, brakes down on the tow pedals. Slowly increasing throttle. Do believe you can just slam it. Uh, the electronics should handle the run up for you. Alright, there's the light. Reheat is kicking in. Let's go out. Ooh, look at that. Alright, break release. And here we go, sim captains. Maiden voyage for me. The Concord. I see some V speeds there. Alright, we're rotating. I guess I'm going to hold about 15. Tracking the gear using G on the keyboard. Hope we're not going to observe any speed and altitude restrictions. Our airspeed's climbing very quickly, so we're going to keep an eye on those. Max V speed needles. Like we're 20 degrees nose up. All right. Uh, there, I just took us out of uh, reburn, and let's get that screen up. That's probably about the fastest you've uh, had an airliner 10,000 feet. Okay, let's nose down. Cause Hear that bell? That's the trim. I'm using the trim on my joystick. There we go. All right, airspeed's coming up. Oh, oh, oh! Thank you for the reminder. That's nice. They can give us a little. Uh, that's not what we want. Flight engineer, trim for flight. Thank you, sir. All right. Really try to oh, let's let's nose up because we don't want to overspeed there. Throttle back a tiny bit, tiny bit. Don't exceed that speed. Uh, they did warn in the documentation not to yank the throttles back 
basically compressor stall risk. So just ease off it if you need to. Alright, we're uh, completely hand flying still at this point. Looks like Concord. Beautiful. Oh, those landing lights are still on, aren't they? Two of their setting. There we go. Two nine or nine two. Let's kill those lights. There we go. Landing lights retracted and off. that flight engineers again. Flight descent, okay, we're not going to need to mess with that again. So, we're exceeding 28,000 feet, let's punch it up. And, uh, let's go back into reburn, you can see the lights are coming on. Ooh, 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 ooh. I guess we're going to take it out of reburn. What I'm hoping to do right now is climb. get us into our supersonic speed. You can see we're at Mach uh, 0.94. All right, the reburn's back on. Lights are indicating it. So much for noise abatement. We are headed southwest right now, which should take us over the continental United States, which is uh, basically the big hoopla that destroyed any potential for the Concorde to ever be profitable or mainstream sales. Once the uh, noise concerns came in, pretty much all the U.S. airlines uh, dropped their orders, and that pretty much sealed the deal for Concorde being a giant white elephant project of Europe. Certainly a technological achievement. Definitely not take that away from them. There's uh, nothing like it. That said, from a profitability standpoint, it, uh, it made money, but was it ever enough to justify the expense did it ever really take the market share they thought it might? Uh, the idea at the time might have been that this would have been the first class travel that the jet set of the 1970s would have paid the premium to arrive at their destinations in a fraction of the time. But since that never panned out, Concord's fate was sealed. I have to check, I believe they only produced 10 or 12 of these. And with one hull loss, that actually makes it the worst commercial service safety record. Which I know isn't really fair, that's just statistics for you. So, flight level <laughs> 4 or 7. I was just thinking, an X-Plane, uh, I don't think I've had anything this high. I haven't really been messing around with fighters. And I'll tell you what, let's, rather than continuing to climb, and I need to go read the documentation, let's stay here. Okay, so if you look, we actually need to maintain a decent amount of nose up to not descend. Uh, the, just the way this delta wing works, you're, you're always going to have sort of a nose up. It's never going to be a true zero. That's interesting. We just got some cabin lights. Hit Mach 1. Beautiful. I see we're at some airspeed limits, so we probably need to climb. thinner the air is, the better. I 
Now I'm not really giving any joystick input, I'm just on my trim buttons. If you hear that little bicycle bell, that is the sound of the trim. So if you're used to the whoosh whoosh whooshing of the spinning trim wheel in a Boeing, you get a, uh, a child's bicycle bell on Concorde. Alright, well you can see I'm just about to fall below Mach 1. Woo! Yeesh. It very little input, but we've got big nose pitch up. So I'm going to give some joystick input, bring it back down. And we definitely lost supersonic. Let's take a peek at that chronometer. How long have we been in reburn? 5 minutes and 40 seconds. Alright. Alright, well, we're well within our desired altitude range. So the trick now is going to be to reclaim the speed we want. Uh, what did I say earlier? Above Mach 1.7, we're going to cut the reburn. That's 1.7. Well, let's get back to Mach 1. So perhaps over Mach, we don't watch the airspeed indicator. As we pass through Mach 1, they may have noticed the needle on the uh, airspeed dived briefly. Let's try using pitch hold, because I'm working pretty hard here. And I don't think I'm consistent enough to do this well. So there we go. It's about 4 degrees up. Where's uh, the adjustment for this. Alright, autopilot one and pitch hold. I was reading in the documentation there's a uh ah, that's level. That's not what I want. You hear the bell as it's trimming. That's not right. Alright, well, we're going to take a break for a second. I'm going to go check the documentation where that is. Alright, I believe I've got it for you. So, we're going to click. There it is. Do you see those arrows? It's right here. Oh, whoa, 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 that's a bit much. You see the little white line? Now we've set it. Alright, that's probably a lot. That's, you know, let's go four degrees. Four degrees up. Okay, so what do we have going on at four degrees? We are climbing, which is good. We lost altitude. We were out flight level uh, 520 last time I looked, and now we're at 487. So we are climbing. Mach number is Mach 1.25 and climbing. One, two, six. There we go. Well, I guess I probably hand flew it a little too long. Okay, we're well within our 15 minute range of uh, reburn, or about eight and a half minutes now. And we want to punch through Mach 1.7 in that time. So you want to lower this maybe another degree down. So we can pick up a little more. Still climbing. Mach 
one two nine. All right, things are stable up here. Let's jump on back. Oh, nice, negative fifty-seven. That sounds right. Mock. Hmm. Oh, that's miles per hour. <laughs> All right, Mach 135, 51,000 feet. Are we at 51? We are at 51. Very neat. Let's go to the rear cabin. So that we were in the forward cabin a moment ago. Here's the rear cabin. So we still have those displays. I, I like the. I don't know if you can hear the my old conversation that restaurant-like clinking of plates and glasses. business end. Um, at some point earlier, I don't know if you noticed all of the panel lights clicking on. I didn't do that. They came on on their own. And now the flight engineer station looks a lot better. Things actually move here. They just don't do anything. Uh oh, what did they say? We suggest one. Oh, probably reburn off. That's probably what he's saying because we went through 1.7. Just eased, easing back the throttles. There we go. Okay. Very nice. What a beautiful aircraft. Ah, so sorry it's gone. All right. Now that the reburn is off. Can see it's uh, effectively super cruising. We're still accelerating. All right. So uh, if you're wondering again what we did to kind of stabilize here, used pitch hold, autopilot one to put that basically into command, and then on the side here. That is your up and down click region. There's no actual dial, and that will set that white line for it to hold the pitch. So you can thank the documentation. That's not one you would probably figure out on your own. See, our reburn clock is stopped running. Let's take a peek at everything now that we're actually moving. All right, Sim Captains, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this brief little bit. I'm going to try and get us around for a landing here in a moment, but I'm sure you don't really care to watch all of that descent, so we'll pick back up in a moment. All right, Allied, we're not quite done. We've just passed Mach 2. And uh, in my desire to get you around and do a landing, I tried heading hold. Uh, they mentioned in the documentation things that blink in the autopilot are not yet operational. So heading hold is not going to work for us. So just thought you'd like to know that. I also noticed up here in the menu bar we've got a Concord FXP added. It's got some pre-programmed views is kind of neat, but you can use the uh, number pad to set these up yourself. So the odds of me actually, oh gosh, they're really close. Why would I want to be that close? Uh, the odds of me actually using that are about zilch, but it's kind of cool that it's there. But uh, we're continuing to accelerate. There was a call out from our virtual first officer when we hit Mach 2. sure if we're still accelerating or not. We are still climbing. Might need to bring that down. Well, whatever. I'm going to figure out how to turn us around here. So, decide we're going to do it by hand. Oh, 
and you can hear the trim bell. I'm irritating it greatly. It's trying to maintain trim. So I try to bring this around. I'm trying to be very gentle on the input. So we're at a very, very high speed. managed to uh, bring ourselves left about three or four degrees at this point. This, uh, let's look at it on the map. This is going to be the world's biggest turn radius at this rate. Alright, I'm just going to call out for maximum flight level 60,000 feet. So let's Adjust that down. Guess we'd kind of like to descend anyway, wouldn't we? So there we go. And uh, the throttles I have just under the reburn level right now. With the N1 and N2, We're actually over 100% on the N2. There we go, now we're at 100. Getting a little better rate of turn right now. Alright, I keep saying this, maybe this time it'll actually be it. I think the next cut is going to be to landing. Alrighty, just checking something out here as we're descending. Uh, as you might imagine, from such an extreme flight level, it takes a while. A moment ago, this red light was blinking because I was approaching over speed. The documentation mentions, without a spoiler, you can use reverse thrust. So let's try that now. There we go. You see how the center two, engines two and three, we've got the blue light. Let's go back and look. There you go. Not sure if you can actually see that worth a darn. See the clamshells are shut. There we go. That's dropped. That is definitely dropping airspeed. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Sort of pegged our descent. I'm not Oh, that's interesting. I just discovered we've got a, uh, you can set, ah, VS you can set. That's interesting. Anyway, I'm not headed for any particular airport at the moment. We are just, uh, cruising along. We made it down to about Virginia. There's a naval air station somewhere ahead of me here. Alright, the low speed handling is quite nice. You'll notice I'm very squirrely with it. I wouldn't say it's the most stable feeling, but uh, you definitely have a ton of control, and these Olympus engines just have a ton of performance available at all times. I keep uh, hitting the airspeed limits. And it's quite quiet up here in the cockpit, which is probably accurate because we're so far away from the engines. All right, gear is down. I've got my viewpoint raised. We're really low. We're just skimming in at the treetops this time, so we really need to slow down. Okay. Unstable. Now Unstable. Getting, uh... There we go. That's fine. Oh, sheesh. Raise that viewpoint. Yeah, 
really should have selected a more appropriate airport for this. center line but we're gonna put her down anyway. That's one interesting thing we got that wall there. What? Oh horrible. Horrible. That is not how this video is supposed to end. I suspect it to the wall. Let's do the replay. Let's see what on earth happened there. Yep. Stupid. <laughs> well, that's an unfortunate way to uh to wrap it up now, isn't it? All right. Well, uh, better evacuate, huh? Hey there. Now we're somewhere else, guys. This is a 10-mile final to JFK. Two to right. Um, I just loaded us up at 10 mile final for this runway. I have not really even got a chance to check what all is running yet. Looks like we're basically ready. Uh, nose is down, windshield down, because the windshield has to be down. It comes down first. And yeah, let's slow this thing down. So we're coming in fast. I really do want to see how it handles on touchdown, so uh, we're just going to have to repeat it after my abysmal attempt to put it in wallops and hitting that barrier. Shame on me. Since we always sign off with uh, plan the flight and fly the plan, in this case I just went for don't plan the flight and fly the plane and it absolutely backfired. Absolutely. Disastrously. Alright, looks like we have a pretty normal descent right here. We're bleeding off speed. I haven't checked the weather, but we must have some wind. You can see the nose is kicking back and forth. Put my gear down. It's added some drag. The airspeed's dropping. Bring her up a little bit from idle. Flaps, flaps. Okay, give it a little more throttle. Unstable, unstable. As it gets slower, and it's going to start dropping. So, try to keep the airspeed appropriately high. And we've skipped any semblance of checklist. I, I don't know if we have any lights on or anything else. Did not go to check the fuel trim. I hope we don't clip any trees. I'm really not in the mood for blowing up in a second Concorde in a row. There we go. Looks like we're over the trees. Airport property. Fantastic. It's looking better already. Okay, slowing her down. Notice we're still about 10 degrees nose up. Come on, let's not overrun. Long landing, long landing, 6,000 feet remaining, 5,000 remaining, 3,000 remaining, 2,000 remaining. All right, we're full thrust reverse, full break. We might be turning into a cruise line. Woo! Fantastic. All right. Cancel thrust reverse. Actually pushing us backwards a bit. All right, we uh, we made it without destroying the aircraft this time. Should we go see how it looked? So it's a very different feel on that approach than uh, the more standard wing. I really felt as I got below about 250 knots 
like it was just going to start dropping out of the sky. And look at this nose up angle. And so as I throttled up a bit, it got a float. And actually, I guess it may just be a massive ground effect. Let's see what this looks like here. much to idle at this point. I thought it was going to be perfect. Here appears to be where my mistake is. I wouldn't have given for a spoiler right then. I'll put him in those reversers out. Got a bounce. And down. Full reverse. Did go full on the tow brakes. There we have it. She stopped. All right. I think that's a, a far more appropriate ending to our video than my terrible crash out at Wallops. Uh, if you end up not seeing a crash in the video, it's because perhaps it may not add anything other than to just amuse you with my terrible decision making there. So again, this is the much awaited Concorde for X-Plane 11 and this is the Flight Brothers just taking a quick first day, first time out of the box overview for you. Do check back with us, we'll uh, figure out how to use this nav equipment um, and see what autopilot functions are actually operational here and we'll go from there as well as uh, they're planning to update this bird as time goes on so we'd really like to see what they're going to do back here in the flight engineer station and, uh, and as you may have heard me talk about I'm just waiting for this carpet to go the carpet has got to go alright so thanks for joining us plan the flight and fly the plan